Hi, my name is Renny, and I'm making this video to talk about epilepsy. And not only epilepsy in general, but mine and my story dealing with it. I'm making this because I realize not enough people are educated on this, and if they are, some are poorly educated or miseducated. To start out, epilepsy is actually fairly common. It affects 1 in 26 people, and the day to celebrate it is March 26th because of this. So, I grew up perfectly normal. There were no issues until around the age of 11 or 12. And I'd just like to add in that some people know the causes of their epilepsy, but most never do. I'm one of the people who will never know why I have it, and they can't quite figure it out. Um, so when I was about 11, I went into middle school and things were perfectly normal. I lived a normal night life. I was a perfectly happy kid, you know, doing all the crazy stuff normal kids do. But as I started going through middle school, things started getting a little bit different. And around eighth grade, I randomly just started passing out. That's what we thought it was. We didn't really know what was happening. I was just losing consciousness. I had to have teachers walk me down the hall and that was about that. Then as it went on a little bit more, eventually I got brought to the hospital to figure out what was wrong. And when we got there, basically I had had one of these episodes where I'd passed out and a nurse had pressed on my thumb and she had felt resistance because I was very tense and she basically claimed that I was faking it because I was admitted for passing out and you know you're not tense when you pass out so this was about December of 2015 so skip ahead I start passing out more and more and more um, I don't really know what's going on or what to do about it and it just gets worse and worse and worse. Eventually, it got out of control. I only lived with my mom. I didn't have really anyone else in the picture and she couldn't quite deal with it. So we ended up moving in with my grandmother. And at night was when it started getting really bad because I realized I was like incontinent in bed and I didn't want to tell about it because it was embarrassing. I thought I was bedwetting at the age of 14 and no one wants to tell their parents that. So I sort of just didn't tell anyone until it started getting really bad because I was at summer camp and it was happening and I ended up getting sent home due to mental health issues. I don't really remember because part of my epilepsy is I lost basically all of my memory of all of my childhood and it is very difficult for me to remember new things. So basically everything I'm saying is just what I've been told or brief moments and pieces that I do remember. But continuing on, I start having these episodes in my sleep. I don't know what's going on. And then finally, somehow, someone ended up finding out about it. And we started realizing that I was, like, having seizures in my sleep. Now, for some reason, some people don't think that can happen, and I'll get into that. But um, we ended up sort of freaking out about it. We didn't know what was happening, and I started having more and more seizures over time, I wasn't just having them when I was sleeping anymore. I was having them during the day. It was making it so I couldn't go to school. I was getting sent home from school. And finally we saw a neurologist. Now this is January of 2017, so over a year later. And finally I was getting an EEG done and I had a seizure while they were doing it. I was blowing on a pinwheel and that caused the lack of oxygen to my brain and that's what causes my seizures and I had a seizure and they had it documented and I got diagnosed with epilepsy but I went about a year being told by a lot of people most people in my life that I was faking this that all of this wasn't real and this is actually a very common problem because what a lot of people don't realize with epilepsy is it's not people have seizures when they see flashing lights. That's what a lot of people think epilepsy is, is just someone sees flashing lights and they have a seizure. 
And that is a thing, that's photosensitive epilepsy, but that's a very small percentage of epileptics. There are many, many different kinds of seizures, and some where you don't even go unconscious. And people don't realize this, so they don't look for it and they judge too soon. And that's a very big issue. I have a few people that I know that are epileptic that have gone through similar struggles. But um, I had finally gotten diagnosed, but epilepsy does obviously cause brain damage. And with that comes mental health issues out of the wazoo. And I had convinced myself that my epilepsy was fake, that I was faking my seizures, that none of it was real, because that was what I was told for the first year of dealing with this new stuff. I was having, at this point, 10 to 20 grand mal seizures a day, and I had lost all basic functions of a human. I really didn't know who I was, where I was, what was going on, and people didn't think I was going to come back from it. They just thought that that was who I was going to be until, you know, my life ended. And it was really scary for everyone else, but for me, I didn't even know what was going on. And time went on, the neurologist found some medication, and my seizures kind of subsided. I started having them less and less, and then I ended up being seizure-free, and life went on, but I was in a new school. I had gotten pulled from school for my epilepsy, but because I wasn't having as much seizures, I went back to school, and people really don't understand it. I had people who would shove me into lockers and call me names and kick me when I was having them, and it was really bad. I was referred to in this school as Twitch Bitch, and that was my ninth grade experience dealing with that. I hated it, school sucked, and I just went back to tutoring from home. It was absolutely horrendous. I didn't want to deal with it, and so I didn't. Um, eventually, we got a hold of it, and I went back to school, but at this point, my mom and I had moved out because we had gotten things under control. That's where I live now, but... When I went back to school, I was okay for a little bit, and then I started having seizures again. And it started as the passing out, and then turning into grand mal seizures, now called tonic-clonic, which is where you shake and twitch, and you lose complete consciousness, like you lose all of your consciousness, and you have no idea what's going on. I lose all my memory of it and everything that happens before. Um, it's just all gone because it just destroys your brain. And before I have them, sometimes I get what's called an aura where weird things happen, but they're absolutely the worst. You get this uncontrollable feeling of fear. You might see things that aren't there, hear things that aren't there. And a very common one in epileptics, which is very strange, is deja vu. You feel as if you lived that moment before and you're back in that moment. And normal people get deja vu and they're like, whoa, this is weird. But as an epileptic, anytime you get deja vu, you get very scared because you're like, is this a seizure coming on? Along with that, you get pins and needles. You sometimes can't move. You start twitching and you can't control it. And... The worst part is there's nothing you can really do to stop it. It just either it happens or it doesn't and you have to deal with it. But I dealt with it and slowly things started getting better again. I went longer and longer being seizure free and then my medication started to have issues again and I started having more seizures. Now, typically I think around, I'm not, don't quote me on these numbers, but around 50% of people get, um, they become seizure free off of one medication. And then after two medications, it's like a smaller percent of becoming seizure free. And then after you have three medications and you're still not seizure free, odds are you will not become seizure free. Epilepsy is a lifelong disease. And even if you are seizure free, you are never like undiagnosed as being an epileptic. 
you I've been seizure free now for about a year and a half and I still at any moment could drop and have a seizure there is no way to sort of cure that the brain is too complex to really study and no one can quite figure it out but getting back to this story I was back in school and I had started new medications and they started working and then as had happened before I went a short period of time being seizure free and I start having seizures again so I started having seizures in eighth grade we're getting to about 11th grade now and finally I'd started a new medication called Vimpat which basically stopped my seizures in their tracks. Um, the last seizure I had had at that point was in April of my 11th grade year which was April of 2019 and I was good. I wasn't having seizures, I wasn't having any side effects and things, things were good and then we get to October of 2019 and I started having a really stressful time going on and there are so many triggers for seizures. There's like lack of sleep, stress, depression, anxiety, not eating, exercising too much, not enough oxygen, which is one of mine, there's not enough oxygen, that's what mainly caused mine. I used to play the flute and... I had to stop because I literally broke it because I had a seizure while I was playing it. But back to that, there's so many things that can cause them. And I was just, there were so many going on with me at that point that I had been six months seizure free and out of nowhere, I just lost it. And seizures aren't just being unconscious, like I said before. Like I literally got up, walked out of my house in the middle of the night in the pouring rain and cold and just walked down the street and in the middle of the street just had a seizure just I almost got ran over by a car supposedly I just remember waking up not knowing where I was not knowing who I was and police just questioning me and they thought I was on drugs they thought I was drunk and they were just asking me all these questions and I couldn't even talk I didn't, I didn't even know my own name. It was very scary. And they ended up having to take me to the hospital, evaluate me, and my seizure-free progress was once again flushed down the toilet. Now that actually was the last time I had a seizure though, and since then I have not had one. And it's very nice being able to say that I'm seizure-free, but a lot of epileptics don't get to say that. And I actually, in New York State, I was told you have to go one year without having a seizure to get your permit, and most people can get their permit when they're 16, and I had to wait until I was 18, which was last October, to actually get mine, and so many people question it. They're like, oh, why haven't you gotten it sooner? Um, people were asking why I was so excited about it, even though it was so late, and it's because that was the first time I, as myself, was able to get it. And I'm so privileged to even be able to drive as an epileptic because a lot of people can't. And I ended up getting my license, and I have a car, but I still have issues with my epilepsy. Epilepsy isn't just seizures, and I actually read somewhere that the easiest part of epilepsy is the seizures because you're not aware of it everyone else is but for an epileptic that's the easiest part because once you have a seizure you have horrible migraines you get memory loss i've lost so many friends and family and relationships because of it and there have just been so many issues that have been caused by it i ended up having to drop out of school because they didn't give me the accommodations that i needed and i couldn't go to school because Everyone knew me as the girl who had seizures. I've seen some people that I went to high school with and I asked them if they remembered me and they're like, oh no. And I'm like, oh, I'm the girl who had seizures. And they're like, oh yeah, I know, I know you. And my, my school was just really bad. I had a school nurse, school nurse tell me that it is not possible to have seizures in your sleep when I was telling her the story of my epilepsy. An RN, that was my school nurse, tell me 
that it wasn't possible. And it's like, I think me, of all people, I would know if that was possible or not, considering, you know, it was happening to me. But you would also think the person who has a license in this, in the medical field, would also know that. But so many people aren't educated on this. And when I was having seizures, I literally, the nurses would get a call and you'd hear them sigh. Or when they showed up and saw me on the floor, they'd roll their eyes or give me attitude because they were so sick of picking me up in a wheelchair and bringing me to the nurse. It was just a horrible experience. I was forced to take the elevator and I had the woman who ran the elevator always give me problems because I could walk perfectly fine, even though I wasn't allowed to use the stairs and it stated that. But just because I looked fine, you know, I was fine. Why am I taking the elevator? Um, one time I actually got stuck in the elevator. And if I wasn't known as the girl who had seizures, I was known as the girl who got stuck in the elevator. It was, it was one or the other. No one knew who I was. They just knew of me. And it was in the worst ways. And getting back to epilepsy not really being taught about enough is there are so many things that people don't know like the whole seeing strobe lights and having a seizure yeah that'll give me a migraine and if I'm having a really bad day really stressful it could cause me to have one but that's actually only a small percentage like I said before loud noises are a big one that can cause it and there are also seizures where you wouldn't know a person's having a seizure. Like absence seizures are just when a person will just blankly stare or smack their lips and you think they're not paying attention, but it's actually their brain like malfunctioning. And so many people are unaware of this and so many people just don't care to learn. Like my school nurse, we sent in the Epilepsy Foundation to educate all of my teachers. This is a nurse who said I can't have seizures while I'm sleeping. And she literally did not go because she thought she was educated enough as herself. And it's people who are unwilling to learn that is also an issue. Like another big thing is like, I'm still a normal person. I have mental health issues because of it, but I'm still me, I'm still a normal person. And seizure response is also a really miseducated subject like I'm here to tell you now a person cannot swallow their tongue that is physically impossible your tongue is attached right at the bottom of your mouth you know it's it's it's, it's attached you're not going to swallow it and another thing is people always think you gotta shove something in an epileptic's mouth when they're having a seizure don't do that that'll break my teeth that'll dislocate my jaw I don't need that because that's a medical bill that I'm gonna end up paying and I don't want to. I have enough bills as is. Um, the correct seizure response is if a person has a seizure, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that they are on their side and their head is not elevated, but level to their body. Never put anything in their mouth and never restrain them because that can cause them to pull muscles because even if you try to restrain them, they are still gonna keep moving. The only thing you need to do is just make sure that they're on their side and their head is supported. And what you wanna do is once they start having a seizure, you wanna start a timer. If a person has a seizure that lasts more than five minutes, that is when you call 911. But if a person is epileptic and they have a seizure and you call 911 anytime they have a seizure, I guarantee you it is going to piss them off. I used to have seizures and everyone would always ask if I needed to call an ambulance. And it's the most annoying thing because it's like, no, I get this isn't normal to you, but it's normal to me. Someone called an ambulance every time I had a seizure, I'd have thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars in medical bills. And nobody wants that. And most people who have seizures have a seizure response plan um, if you know someone with epilepsy, just ask them if they have one. And some people who have seizures tend to have a certain amount of time that their seizures last. And if you ask them that, then maybe the time may differ from when you call 911. My seizures normally lasted about a minute, so anything more than three minutes was kind of alarming and stuff like that. You know, you just want to make sure every person is different, you know. 
no two cases of epilepsy are the same and no people no two people with epilepsy should be treated with the same manner because everyone is different but i just wanted to put this out there because so many people don't know about this and so many people judge so quick about this but we are normal people and i'm actually making this because even though i am seizure free in a few days i'm getting vns surgery which is vagus nerve stimulation which is to help with my epilepsy because even though i don't still have seizures i still have issues with my epilepsy where i still have aura like symptoms where i feel off i feel scared it makes me panic and it's very difficult in an everyday life and I just want to manage to get rid of that because there are so many people who are epileptic that even if they're seizure free, they are afraid to ever stop taking their medications. My mom knows a man who is, I believe, well in his 80s, who hasn't had a seizure in probably over 50 years, but he still takes his meds. Because like I said, at any moment, something can happen. So I'm getting this surgery just to sort of have a backup in case something does happen and you know epilepsy like i said is a lifelong disease and living with it i feel that more people should be educated on it and that's why i'm making this so hopefully this helped just a little bit and if you're ever interested in anything you could always look it up but this is just an eye opener for all you out there